During the 1950s, studies with preternatural mind abilities found a home in top-tier institutions. Parapsychologists studied uncanny gifts like extrasensory perception, or the ability to read minds, clairvoyance, or the ability to see the future, and telekinesis, or the ability to move objects with one's mind. In 1957, Duke University parapsychologists Joseph Banks Ryan, the man who coined the term ESP, and his research partner Joseph Gaither Pratt published their findings on supernormal abilities that had taken place earlier in the decade. In the book documenting their work, titled Parapsychology, Frontier Science of the Mind, they make an early reference to the use of drugs in conjunction with the study of supernormal abilities. However, they focus their attention only on narcotics like sodium amytal, a well-known sedative, and dexedrine, a stimulant used to treat ADHD. They found no conclusion on the use of drugs in ESP tests. Perhaps they were using the wrong substances. Enter Rosalind Haywood. Vice President of the Society of Psychical Research in London. Haywood had an intuitive gift. Paranormal phenomena seemed to follow her wherever she went, and she was quite the vanguard for adopting new paradigms about psychedelics. In the early 1950s, when she had her first experience with mescaline, a synthetic creation of the sacred peyote cactus, most doctors considered these substances psychotomimetics, or drugs that mimic madness. Haywood felt differently, remarking that the psychedelic state of awareness was closer to psychic states of awareness, having nothing to do with madness at all. She felt that using LSD and mescaline would allow her to find the area of the brain where phenomenal activity rested, lying dormant until activated. And so in 1952, Haywood found herself in the office of Dr. Wilhelm Mayer Gross, who was one of only a few doctors working with psychedelics in England at the time. A few hours after swallowing mescaline, she found herself bathing in, as she put it, the pure light at the top of the mountain. Further into the symbols of universal interrelatedness of mystics, artists, saints, and sensitives, the interrelatedness was a delicate spidery web which linked everything to everything, from atom to nebula. The universe was in constant fluid movement. Gradually, I became aware of that movement as a crucial fact. It was the dance. The interweaving, eternal, relentless, cosmic dance. The dance of beingness. I saw the God, the Krishna, dancing and cried out in extreme delight. There also appeared a supreme figure, eternally at peace, the Divine Mother. But Dr. Mayer Gross wasn't interested in any of this. He cared not about ESP, the Divine Mother, or the aesthetics of a mystical experience. He was more interested in having Haywood find where the roots of madness lie in the brain. And so Haywood left the cosmic beauty in which she was enraptured and tried to find the black holes of the mind, that place where madness was born. She found herself in a cold desert setting that was almost lifeless, except for gray, shadowy figures, who she called the Lost. Regretfully, she could not help these poor beings find the light of sanity. A few days after her experience, Haywood records what is arguably the first flashback in history. Although, as that word had not been coined yet, she calls it a throwback. During Haywood's throwback, the Divine Mother appeared in her kitchen. The Divine Mother spoke. The universe could not become conscious of its unity until the principle of communication, which was love, had been injected into it. 
It was now Haywood's job to bring that love into the world. The Freudians dismissed her vision of the Divine Mother as a construct of Haywood feeling that she didn't have a good relationship with her own mother during her youth. Those of the Jungian school labeled the vision as nothing more than an archetype. And Catholics felt that it was really the Virgin Mary, who Haywood had misidentified as some pan-universal creatrix. None of this bothered Haywood who was too busy remembering her visit to the white light of the mountain to care about these opinions. In the end, Haywood came to realize that, much as the psychedelic state of awareness reflected the paranormal state of awareness where ESP, clairvoyance, and telekinesis lived, she could find no way to turn a person under the influence of LSD into a bona fide psychic. However, she died believing that such possibilities were just over the psychedelic and scientific horizon. For this story and more like it, check out the forthcoming book, LSD, The Wonder Child, The Golden Age of Psychedelic Research in the 1950s by Thomas Hatzis, out July 2021.